So hello and welcome back to Blake's Den and my 1965 Ford 3000 tractor. So in this video I'm going to finally sort out the charging problems once and for all by replacing the dynamo with an alternator. So let's get started. So why am I doing this? Well ever since I got the tractor back up and running, it had been laid up for about 15 years, I have not been able to get this charged correctly. I've rebuilt the dynamo, I've put a different control box on, I've tried several control boxes. It's not happening. There's clearly a problem. I'm just going to go for the reliable option, which is to throw an alternator on. So I'll show you now where I've got the alternator from and how I know it's a good alternator. I ignore the mess, but what I've got here, I've got a mini A-series 45 amp, I think it is, or is it 55 amp alternator? It was of that mini. It was actually a replacement one for that mini, but the one I had on it was working, so long story. How I've got this set up, body connected via a big jump lead to negative. I've got negative going to my multimeter, positive going to my multimeter, reading the battery voltage of 12.37 volts. Coming off a positive, I've got a bulb. That's the same as your ignition lamp bulb. And the green wire goes into the indicator side of the alternator. And the red wire coming out of the alternator is the output. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spin this up using my impact gun. Then hopefully the ignition light will go out and we'll have voltage. So let's try that if I put you over here. So you can see both, and I put the impact gun on. Right, you want, you ready? So yeah, the light went out, and we had voltage. Let's try again. I just need to uh, use two hands to hold the alternator. To fit the alternator, we need to obviously remove the dynamo. It's only held on by sort of three bolts, and I think we should be able to uh, get this out fairly easily. There's a bolt here, a bolt here, then another bolt down there. Um, we'll be able to reuse two of those, I'm thinking, possibly three, depending on how we do it, um, when the alternator's fitted. So let's make a start and get this off. Three bolts undone, came off fairly easily. Obviously I pulled off the dynamo and the field connections. Connections, I won't be needing them for the alternator. Um, right, I'm gonna bring the alternator out and we'll see how we can get it to fit. So we've got a bracket here, and we've got this sort of adjustable bracket up here, which is the um, tension one. So I'll see how well it fits. I've got this roughly in position, and it looks like it'll fit. I've got the bottom bolt in, but loose got a top bolt in on the tensioner but loose and yeah it seems all right it's obviously not sitting straight because nothing's tight the biggest problem here is obviously that, that distance from there you can buy a different bracket but I think I can just put a long bolt in there and space that out so I'm gonna get some new fasteners and I'm gonna continue to assemble this and put this together and yeah I think this might just work and we are fully mounted now Decided to just use a bit of M8 studding in the end for over here. Um, we'll see how that goes. I can always double nut it if necessary. Obviously, I lose the taco drive, but I haven't had the taco drive anyway. And yeah, it looks looks to be lining up fine. So that's good. Next job is the wiring, and that's where things can get a little bit complicated. But I know what I need to do. I think. I'm now around the other side of the tractor. What I should have said from the start was. Make sure your battery's disconnected before you do anything on the electrics. So here's the old regulator box, which is now going to be surplus to requirements. It's got an earth. We no longer need that. So that can be pulled out. It's got a D, which is to the dynamo. That's no longer needed. So that's redundant. WL's the warning light. We do need that one. We then got the field 
which is the other connection to the battery. We don't need that. Uh, sorry, other connection to the dynamo. We don't need that. And then you've got two on the ends, which are batteries. They need to be joined together to create continuity in the electrical circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get a little bit of a um, steel, push it in there and join these two together. And I think that is what I'll need to do. And then for the warning light in the field and the dynamo, I've got a cunning plan. So for the two battery connections, see I've just got a bit of steel, which will go in there and join the two together. Stick those together, will he shrink around that? So I think that's what I'll do there. The brown and green wire used to be the field connection to the dynamo. And the brown and yellow here is the warning light. So what I'm actually going to do, I've connected the brown and green to the warning light terminal on the alternator. And because this goes to the warning light, again, just like it did there, I'm going to join these two together. And then that should give me the warning light on the dashboard. Have the, they're all wrapped now with some additional duct tape on. The D wire, which used to be from the dynamo, I'm going to use that to provide the plus 12 volt or plus 14 volts from the alternator. Now I could have teed that into those battery ones here and said I want to run this directly to the battery but of course it's not quite long enough. So I'm going to extend that wire a bit and then I'm going to put a terminal on it so that I can connect it straight to the positive and that way I can do a bit of fault finding as well. I can disconnect it if, if I find I've got a problem it's not hacked into the, the wire in anywhere. Plus it makes everything fully reversible. So that's what I'm going to do now. I didn't have a cable suitably sized, so I ended up running two cables to a terminal here so we can connect that onto the battery there. That's good. And then we need to make the final connection, which is the opposite end of our cable, onto the alternator. Back at the alternator end, I've connected the lead, which was D. And I've gone to the post up here. and um, That's a live post. The cover comes off. Or you could pick up either of those two posts down there. Not the one which is the warning light. So, I think we're ready for a test. Mm. Let's be brave and start it up and see what happens. So, the lead from the alternator I've just left loose for now, so I can quickly pull that off. And I've put the negative back on the battery. No sparks, which is always a good sign. Right, the expected behaviour should be warning lights on. Yes. We put a little bit of throttle in, check we're out of gear, we're out of gear, and start it up. The warning light should go off, and we should have 14 volts at the battery, or something like that. Oh, of course, but I forgot the starter motors on the way out, so give me a second to hit that. I think I've got the starter working now, so a bit of throttle. Light's gone out. Yes, we're charging. Not charging particularly well, but we're charging. So I'm going to take that as a win. That all seems to be working fine. I've made that final connection now to the battery. We've got no smoke or flames from anywhere. And on idle, we've got 13.67 in climbing. The battery uh, lead fell off. Um, I suspect this isn't the world's best alternator. It cost me £10 from a mini fair several years ago. Uh, it's probably on its way out. Also, the pulley size is probably wrong for this. If you think about the tractor runs, well, probably like 540 RPM for a PTO. So the idle is well below that. That's a lot less than it would be on a car. 
Carl Idle like 750, 800. So, um, so yeah, I suspect the pulley's like too big, so it's spinning too slow. But um, it's doing the job. It's better than that dynamo I took off, so I'm calling that a win. Still going up. Now with the engine off, it's a lot quieter and you can see the voltage gradually decreasing. So yeah, that is all working. Hunky dory. With that, I'm going to end the video there. Who would have thought you could fix a 1965 Ford 3000 tractor with an alternator from an Austin Mini? Exactly. But it just proves why Minis are awesome and why I've got two of them. So thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, press the like button. If you've got any comments or questions about this, drop them below. I respond to all of my comments. And please consider subscribing to the channel as well. It costs you absolutely nothing and you'll be notified of all my latest videos. So with that, I'll say bye for now and I'll see you in the next one.